Boy, good morning. It is Monday, January something. We're going to call it January 20th. I've lost all track of time. Uh, and it's been a little while since I've been on here, so I thought it'd be a good opportunity to check back in, see how everybody's doing, um, and get back to this streaming thing. Um, quick story on, I guess, why I haven't been streaming is that it seems like every day that I wanted to go out and do something or, or stream something, I was out of town. Um, I spent a ton of time over the holidays and certainly early this year uh, traveling. So um, obviously we had uh, the Christmas holiday and New Year's and stuff like that, and so that certainly interfered a little bit. Um, but the first week of January, uh, January 6th, I think, was the Monday, um, I was at a conference called Code Mash, and we're actually going to talk about what I did while I was there. Uh, and then the, this past Monday, a week from uh, today, um, I was at an event called uh, Project Voice, which was down in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I got to meet with a bunch of people that are thinking very deeply about voice. I got to give the Alexa keynote there, which was super cool, uh, and I spent a bunch of time just interviewing and talking to people about what they're building and what they think about and what they like and don't like and all of that stuff. So that's where I've been. That's why I've been uh, kind of lacking in the streaming game. Uh, but I'm back, and I plan on doing this at least twice a week. Uh, Mondays and Wednesdays seem to work pretty well for me. Uh, but I'm also taking off. I get to add a new addition to the map here. Uh, I'm going to be heading way over here to India. Uh, and so the first week of February, February 4th, I think I leave, uh, I'm going to be flying to India and doing an event um, there in Bangalore, India. And I'll, I have a few days before and after I'm going to meet with some people and talk with uh, Indian developers about what they're building and what they're thinking. Um, because it, it, I found that every geography I go to, there's this, there's a different kind of energy. There's always good energy, but it's a, it's a different kind. People are excited about uh, really enterprise specific things, or they're excited about games or, um, uh, you know, applications that'll, that simplify life. Um, and so accessory skills, I guess, is how I would think of that. Uh, and in each of those cases, it seems like uh, the geography defines some of that. Like the culture says, hey, these are the things that I really want to build. And so it's been really fun for me to be able to travel the world and talk with de developers from different places because I get to learn a lot about what's important to them and, and what's new and interesting. So a couple of other things uh, since we're here in the studio. You might notice I got a new clock. Um, I might have to lower that a little bit. Let's see if we can do that. Um, this is the new Echo Wall Clock. Um, this is the new Echo Wall Clock. This is the one uh, that has Mickey Mouse on it. And so it's still doing the same thing that we were doing before. You can see that I have my countdown timer going for our stream here, but uh, it's also got Mickey Mouse's hands on it, which is pretty cool. Um, so I swapped that out for Mickey. The one thing that I have noticed, though, is I had to put uh, some cardboard up here. next. I had windows um, that were here next to the screen. Normally it was fine. It just let in some natural light. Um, but this, So this is the old Echo Wall Clock looks like this. Um, and you can see it's got kind of a matte finish. I mean, I have a bright light staring at me, so that's what the light reflection you're seeing is. But in general, it's not very shiny, right? It's a pretty matte finish, and um, unless I shine right at that light, you don't, you don't get a lot of reflection. Where this one actually has a glass face on it, these I can actually touch the hands of the clock. Um, this one is in, encased in like a plexiglass or, or plastic, and then the frame around it is also like a shiny chrome which looks cool, uh, but when I'm trying to stream, it's uh, quite reflective. So I had to block off all the blinds here, otherwise uh, you couldn't even see Mickey, it was so bright. Because uh, we got snow last night, and so it's very white outside, and lots of light is reflecting in. Another thing to talk about, I know we always talk about this wall behind me. Um, I got a bunch of new ones over the holidays, and so I'm going to be replacing the ones that are in camera here, um, and we'll, we'll put some new stuff on screen. Uh, my family's a big fan of the show The Umbrella Academy, and so we actually got all of the characters from The Umbrella Academy, but I've also got like all sorts of Marvel ones and Star Wars ones and all sorts of other things, so I'm going to try and keep a rotation there. Uh, it's kind of fun to see you guys notice when something has changed in the background. So with that, I've done enough talking. Uh, I'd really like to get into a thing that I built, a thing that I promised in the announcement for this stream and actually I was going to um, I was going to go on Twitter really quickly here let me just go on to uh, my browser and just uh, because I haven't been streaming in a while and I know if you don't stream in a while people forget about you so I'm just going to add a new tweet that is I'm streaming this morning on Twitch about the awesome Alexa scavenger hunt oh, 
Let's mute my device. Mm -hmm. Scavenger hunt um, that we ran at hashtag Codemash. Come see how easy it is to build. And then I'll add the link. Twitch.tv slash Jeff Blankenberg. And you guys know that because you're here. And let's do a tweet. All right. So let's, let's talk about what it was first. And I think the best way to do this, I'm going to go into my data. And I'm just going to delete some data. I think this, I'm the first user. So I think this is reasonable to just delete those. And then uh, I should be able to just open the skill. And we'll go split screen with Alexa here for a second. Um, there isn't a lot on the screen, but it's, um, th this gives you an opportunity to really see what's going on. Alexa, open CodeMash. Welcome to the CodeMash Alexa scavenger hunt. The adventure begins at the giant bronze gorilla at the entrance to the Kalahari Convention Center. There, you will find your first password. Come back and tell me the first password, and I'll tell you where the next hint is. Kalahari. Woohoo! You've already found the first clue. Here's your hint to find number two. Make sure you find the clues in order. Go look near a room named after a type of wood, that might have black and white stripes. What is the password? Quit. Okay, so wanna play another one? Alexa, a popular game this week. Quit. So the idea behind the scavenger hunt is that it took place at a giant convention center and indoor water park called the Kalahari, which is up in Sandusky, Ohio. And so, um, I mean, the place is massive. To walk from one end to the other is probably a mile. Uh, and so I wanted to build a scavenger hunt because not only are there a bunch of developers there that I thought would see this as a novel way to use Alexa, uh, but also because um, so many people bring their families to an event like this because it is at an indoor water park, uh, that they've built an entire track at this CodeMash conference for kids. And so there's probably 600 or so children um, that are registered for this as well, and they come and there are speakers like me and other developers that are just really passionate about things. Um, and there's entire tracks of content for them as well, so they can learn about 3D printing and electronics and um, all sorts of other stuff. And I've done some Alexa sessions in the past. Um, but I wanted to try something new, and so that's where we came up with the scavenger hunt, was a way to have them use Alexa, and i got to mute my device again, uh, to go around and um, find different places in the building. And I had a sheet of paper that was just taped to the wall. And so uh, taped to the wall, they'd find a password. I don't, I don't know if I still have... I think I got rid of all of those. Um, but I had, uh, oh, I probably have the Word doc, though. If I go to my, yeah, it's this. Come on, give me the actual document I want. That's not the one. Hmm. All right, anyway, it's not that important. But basically, there were instructions for what to do. There was a QR code to download the Alexa app. Um, so that you didn't have to go and um, like figure out well, what am I supposed to do or how do I, uh, you know, how do I use this this thing? And so um, uh, the main thing on the page though was a password, and the password was something that you were supposed to say to Alexa. And so it gave you instructions like say Alexa open CodeMesh, and then she'll prompt you for what your password should be. And so um, I, I had 20 different stages. You can see them here. This is all in my database. Um, this also made it very easy for me to edit and change as the, the scavenger hunt was being created. Because I had ideas of where I wanted things to be, but it wasn't until I walked through the building and actually put the signs up that I really got a good feel for um, exactly what I wanted to say or how I was going to direct somebody to go to the next clue. And so these were my codes. Uh, you can see I have uh, Kalahari and Baby Yoda, Amazon, Grace Hopper, and on and on. Um, they were meant to be random. I didn't want there to be an obvious pattern that you could then start guessing things. Because I thought if I used all like Amazon companies, that would be guessable. And I didn't want people to be able to guess any of the clues. So um, this was the list. And then, of course, I had an ID for each of them, uh, which was just the name of the order. Uh, and then I had um, what Alexa actually says when you finish that clue. Uh, and I did them all in rhyme. So you can see, like, sixth clue, good for you. Or um, clue number 10, let's do it again, right? There's nothing super complex about these rhymes. but it's uh, 
there's a lot of information that comes in here. I want to let them know like they're 25% done or they're half they're halfway. Um, and so out here at the very end, I had to remind myself like where did I actually put that thing? And so I left myself a little clue uh, for each of the hints that were there as well. And so I have this simple little database. And the other things that I logged were my users. So you can see in here that I had a bunch of users that use this thing um, as we continue to scroll. You can see, and each one of these weren't users. These were actually uh, families in many cases, or groups of people uh, that went out and did this scavenger hunt by themselves. And so uh, each one of these represents a group. And then in here, this attempts table, this actually shows me um, every single attempt. So every utterance that was made to the skill, uh, I recorded this to see um, what people were saying. And so there's you know, hundreds and hundreds of these uh, as we go through it. And what was cool is that people would find one of my posters, because they weren't like super hidden, they were just kind of hidden. Um, people would find one and they would try one and the skill would say, oh, I'm sorry, um, you, that may or may not be a clue, but you haven't found it in the right order. The one I want from you next is this one. And it constantly forced them to redirect, so they had to do them in the right order uh, in order to finish the scavenger hunt. And I, I built the hunt in a way, I mentioned the building is huge, uh, but I built them in such a way that they wouldn't have to like run from one end to the, bu uh, the building to the other to find a clue. I started them in one corner, and I kind of had them navigate their way through the convention center, and then when we were done in the convention center, I sent them to the opposite end where they had to go through an arcade, and they had to go through um, like the lobby of the hotel, and there was one, I worked with the people at the candy store that's in the, the lobby of the hotel. And uh, they hid one like on a back wall of their candy store, so you actually had to go up to the counter and like look around and see stuff. It was kind of fun uh, to have something kind of deep and engaging throughout the entire building. So the, this is the data that I collected, um, and there isn't anything super interesting in here. I haven't taken it apart yet to see um, like how many people tried to guess things or anything like that. But the fact that I'm getting matches on most of these values suggests that there wasn't a lot of guessing, which is which is good. I was hoping that wasn't the case. Um, but I have lots and lots of data to kind of parse through now to see, you know, what what ended up happening. What what did people do? So let's talk uh, a lot a lot about like how we built this. What went into constructing um, this thing? And so this is my skill. And I'll go to my build tab just to kind of show you what my design interface looked like. And you can see that it's not terribly complex, right? We have cancel, help, and stop. Uh, the standard built-in intents that we always have. And then I had one intent called code entry intent, and this is just where they could say um, whatever code that they were trying to provide. Uh, and I probably could have gotten broader with uh, my utterances, but I was pretty sure people were just going to say the word. Uh, and so I didn't need to do a lot with that. I also had my actual code slot has all of my values in it um, and has the, the codes on each one of them so that I know uh, which, one, which one it is and what order it is. This is actually a remnant of old architecture. It's one of those things that if I had more time, I probably would have gone back and fixed everything. But um, the way that I originally constructed this skill was that I had one intent for each word. And so I had, um, you know, code entry. I had, in, I, had um, I think it was answer one, answer two, answer three, answer four. Um, and so it wouldn't let me use uh, numbers in my intent names. And so I had to use these spelled out versions of the words. And so then as I was building some other things, uh, I used that as part of my architecture. You'll see that also here in my database. If I go to my user, I have step one, step two, step three. Actually, this is what I called my intents. Step one, step two, step three, step four. Um, and so that kind of kept its, its way through the architecture. Nothing that I went back and changed soon enough. Uh, but because of that, that's why you see the words spelled out a lot, even though I probably could have built this without that, now knowing that I went to one intent and everything like that. Anyway, so we have all these words, and we have uh, the one intent. And then the, the next thing that I want to take apart is the code. So let me open this up, and I'm probably in the wrong project. So let's just close all of this. Close folder. Let's open one up. We're talking about this. So you can see this, this same in, intent structure, all the stuff that we were just talking about is here. Um, but then we have my index.js is not open. So let's open that. 
and look at how this works. And again, you can see I have more structures where I'm actually using those spelled out names um, just so that I could look them up. So this was basically an array value that would let me give, if I gave array slot five, it would give me back the word five. I, I don't know that I would still need this anymore. I haven't rebuilt it with that in mind, but um, these are again, architectural decisions I made early that when I swapped everything out, uh, I didn't have uh, time or interest to change uh, as we were going. So I have a launch request, and in here you can see that all I do is get a voice response, and this voice response is just going to call down to a, a different function where I'm going to get their current number. So I need to know what number they currently are. Um, what was that array of numbers I just saw? Interesting. Um, so if I go to get current number, oh, I see. It's showing me all the possible return values. So all I'm doing, because I had to translate between these string values and these number values, uh, I was constantly doing little transitions like this where I was checking to see in their array, and this, this data here exactly maps to the data that we find in our data table, step one, step two, step three, step four, right? So that is why, uh, that's why you see those names in there and that's why I had to build those translations. So this is why I didn't just make all the changes. Um, I wanted to make sure that um, uh, it, I mean, this all still worked, so there was no reason to change it, but ultimately I probably would have done this very differently had I not started out with that one intent per slot value kind of thing. So my get current number, all this does is it looks at my session attributes for my user data, and this is something that I populate every time a skill loads. So you can see here in my request log, I go out and I grab my user record from my database, uh, and then I write that to my session attributes, which is here. So I'm just setting user record dot fields, which is all the fields I just pulled from that data table. And I'm throwing that in my session attribute. So I have that every time that the skill runs. So it's very easy to find it. So to get my voice response, if we go back down there, I know what number they're currently at. So they're at one or two or zero or whatever. And then um, I pre-populate a string that says, welcome to the Codemaster Alexa scavenger hunt. This is if they haven't done anything yet. And it just lets them know where they should start and where they'll find their first password. But if their value is greater than zero, then we're gonna go out and we're gonna grab the appropriate value from my table called codes. And in that codes table, which is this one, uh, you can see that I have numbers here, but I also have this order number here. And so if they're uh, at three, then I'm gonna grab this one, which says you found number three. Um, your next stop will be a giant tree. Uh, and so they're in the Kalahari uh, convention center, there are these giant artificial trees um, all over the place. And there's one that's much, much bigger than the rest. And so I use that as a place to hide a hint. Um, and so they just have to go. And you can see at the end of every one, it says, what is the password? Uh, because it should always be prompting them for, hey, wh what word did you find? What is the thing that you did? And so um, in each of these cases, uh, I'm just offering them a hint. Clue number 10, number 13, this one could barely be seen. Um, and so again, we just go through this process of, of identifying what level, what, uh, what clue they're at and give them the next clue. So that's what, um, again, my launch request does is make sure that it gives them the appropriate hint. Um, and then down here, this is my step intent. This is that code entry. Um, and in here you can see that I'm doing a couple of things. So the first thing I have to do is get the words that result, that resolved from what the user said. And then I compare that against um, whether or not that's the appropriate word that they should be giving me right now. And so this is the only real logic that's in my system is that I want to make sure that they have completed the step prior to the word that they've actually given me right now and that the step that they gave me right now is actually undefined, which means they haven't completed it before. Uh, and so then I update their record and I set the one that they just completed to completed so that we don't run into that again. And then always I'm re redirecting them back to a clue. So redirect to clue um, just gives me this, which is kicking them back. And this, for all of these, this is my error message, right? Maybe you found a clue or maybe you didn't. Here's what you should be looking for. And then I get the um, voice response that I need to be giving them. Um, do you have any suggestions of resources that will help me getting started using Airtable with Alexa? Uh, no, there aren't, there aren't a lot of um, like really rich resources. Uh, my recommendation, honestly, is to dig through most of the <coughs> the recent repositories that I have on my GitHub, and actually this code is there as well. This is a nice simple example, but if we go here and go github.com slash Alexa, 
Nope, not Alexa. We have to go to mine. Sorry, the Alexa is where we keep all the like normal, the main stuff. Um, this is all my kind of experimental, fun project kind of stuff. And so if you just come to repositories, I think you can sort them by date, maybe. But it's the it's the first one here anyway. And I'll star this one just so if people are looking for it, they can find it easier. Um, but in here, you'll find all the source code for this skill. And so what's nice about it is that if you go into here, um, you can see that all I'm doing is using Airtable here. Um, and then down here at the bottom, anytime that I'm talking to Airtable, we, if I can find it, um, you'll have like this Airtable and user. And user is the name of the table that I'm talking to. So you can see that that's this name right here. Um, but it, it is a really pretty simple interface. So Oxygen Box, my recommendation honestly is to try to take my skill and just get it to work. Um, you'll have to build a table that looks like this and you should be able to figure out what the names of the tables are based on uh, things like this. And then um, I also have, like this is my attempts table. And again, we have the word air table. I'm creating a new record in the attempts table and I'm passing in a user ID and whatever. So it's a pretty simple interface, but the, the real secret to Airtable, and I think the maybe the thing that helped me the most is if I, I'll open up another tab here. Airtable dot, no, I want API airtable.com and when you're logged in they will just show you all of your tables that you have and so this is my code match table here and if I open this up this is really how I learned how to use this stuff uh, and I think it's the most useful so I have you can see here I have a user table a codes table and an attempts table and so if I look at my user table um, you can see it shows me what my values are um, what my fields are, all that kind of stuff. But if I want to retrieve a record, or let's say I want to create a new user, I come to Create Records, and I'm going to choose JavaScript. And you can see that right here, it gives you the exact code that you need uh, to do this. It's just this much, and this is way more than you actually need. Um, but you can see here that it spells out like, oh, okay, I'm going to call base. I call it this Airtable, but base user create, and then I'm going to pass in fields. And then I have my user ID and step one and attempts, right? It's trying to get me to fill this stuff in. But I can really only fill the records in that I need. But I can literally take this code right here uh, and copy and paste it into my code. And it should just work, assuming that I have Airtable in my node modules, which is a simple one-step process too. So the other nice thing, and I'm not going to click this on stream because it'll show you everybody my API key. But you can see right here it has your API key. Um, but if I check this box, it'll actually fill this value in with my actual API key, which means that I don't have to do any additional work uh, to make this work or, or modify it in any way. Um, it's got all the things in there that I need. So that is more or less how I learned how to use Airtable, is just to use their API, because I can build my own table my own way. Um, and then I come in here and it's like, oh, here's the code you need to create a record in that table or whatever. This is the thing that I think has gotten me the furthest. But I think a combination of this com uh, combined with um, my code on um, GitHub, I think that should be a, a good guide for you. What I probably need to do is build a good sample tutorial that has that walks you through all the steps, so that like you create a table that has the right schema, so that we can easily use some code to like access that table and whatever, and you can see how all the pieces play together. Um, but I found that this is a really really easy way for me to do a lot of that. And if you're really comfortable making web service calls, you don't even have to use um, their SDK here, which is what their API and SDK that we're seeing. Um, there are a lot of times where if I go back in here, I don't know if I do it uh, in this this one. Uh, let's see if I do. Yeah, I, I do things like this also. And this is a more manual way to call out to their stuff. But this first line here, this is my API key. And then I have a filter statement, which is something that you would have to learn how to use with them. But they give you this really cool code pen that allows you to create basically these filter statements. Um, and then what table I want to talk to here. And so I have my own custom folder, that I, or custom function, sorry, that I call HTTP GET. And it's the standard HTTPS um, function call. It's this one here. But I've just made some modifications to it. So in this case, you can see that I have api.airtable.com. These are the like core path URLs straight out to their API, um, but I'm not using their SDK to do this. And so I'm passing in the base ID that I have. 
um, the name of the table that I want, my API key again, which I keep in a uh, environment variable in my Lambda, and then my filter statement so that I'm only pulling back the data from that table that I actually want. Um, and so the rest of this is pretty boilerplate plumbing stuff just to get an HTTPS call to go through. But this is uh, these options here are customized specifically for my purposes to call Airtable. And I have to pass in these values, which is what you saw, uh, whatever that was here. So I have my API key, I have my filter statement, and I have uh, my table name. So between those two, I think you should be well on your way to seeing what's necessary, but I probably should write a tutorial. I think that's a, that's a really good idea. So I'm going to add this to this. I'll see what I can do to write a tutorial, if I can type. Uh, all right, so let's get back into the code. Um, thank you for that question, though, Oxygen Box. Those, those are really good things that I don't always realize um, could use more explanation, and so this is a this is really good guidance for me. Uh, and then the other stuff is pretty boilerplate, right? I have help, um, where I have get voice response. Again, this is that same function that we've been using. And uh, with voice response, all I'm doing is calling back out and making sure I'm getting the right clue for them. There's not a lot of variation in what you can do with this skill. All you can do is give it a password. And so I want to make sure that you know, like, hey, the next thing you need to do is go here, and I'm sending you to a physical location. Uh, cancel and stop, all I do is say goodbye. I was supposed to write some clever goodbyes, but I didn't. Um, and then in here, this is my error, right? If they say something they're not supposed to, and it says maybe you found a clue, maybe you didn't. Either way, it seems like you're guessing. Go find a hint. Um, and so uh, that is the error message that I give them. And then down here, I have my intent reflector and all the other stuff. So that's, that's pretty much it. You can see that I have some arrays here for speech cons. I call them speech cons yay and speech cons nay. Um, this is for every time that you get a password correct or incorrect. Um, I just interject one of these and I say like, hooray, you got it right. Or, uh, oh man, you got that one wrong. And so it randomizes it so not everybody's having the same experience and you're not hearing the same ones over and over. And we talked about give clue and redirect to clue and end game. And then this is what it says at the end. Uh, congratulations, you completed the Codemash scavenger hunt. Um, to claim your prize, text Jeff Blankenberg. I actually write a card to their app. And this was another thing that um, was really cool about this is that uh, I let people discover that, like, hey, these third-party skills exist. Because I think a lot of people uh, that are common or non-Alexa users um, may not even necessarily be aware that, like, there's this whole rich ecosystem of cool Alexa skills out there. And so this was a cool way for people to be able to discover, like, oh, I can just play games and do all this other kind of stuff, but also that the skills can write cards to their app, and so they're using the app to communicate um, with the with the skill and do all that stuff, so they're running around with their phone talking to it. Hey, Michael Bender, thank you for joining. And uh, in doing that, um, when I wrote the card, I gave them my cell phone number, and I told them that they had to um, send me a very specific code that was only written in that card. And so by doing that, now they had um, an easy way to like contact me and let me know that they had definitely found the thing. But what was fun about this is that each day I changed the code. And so there were a couple of people that clearly had just talked to their friends because I, um, as part of my participation in um, this code mesh event, I had gotten a bunch of these, the Echo Flex. And I did some workshops and that's primarily what they were for was to give them away at workshops. Um, but I had some left over, and so I made them the prizes for the scavenger hunt. And I, there were a few people that realized, like, oh, all I have to do is text him this word, and he'll give me a device. And so by changing the code every day, I saw there were a couple people that had talked to their friends that night or the next day and said, oh, you got a device just for doing that? What, like, what did I have to do? And they're like, here, just text him the password, and you'll win. But it was the wrong password, and I was like, nope, you got to actually do the scavenger hunt. It was kind of fun uh, to be able to mess with people that way. So that's really the entirety of the skill, though. There's, it's not a lot of complex interactions or anything like that, um, but it allows us to basically build a, a skill that navigates people through a building um, and tells them where to go and where to find things and, and does it in kind of a fun, engaging way. And so I had, you know, I had a ton of stats. Actually, this is one of the things that I wanted to look at. I haven't, I haven't actually dug into the um, analytics, but I wanted to see what it looked like for those days. So let's come here and look at analytics. Because I rarely have, like I build a lot of cool demoware, but it's rare that I publish something and have a ton of um, live users. And so we should see, yeah, I had uh, 
97 sessions per hour once. Um, this is this is pretty cool. Let's see if we can see like utterances with the. Ch I love a chart. Yeah, so you can see it spiked on the days that this thing was running. Um, but we were doing, you know, we we had 300. Was that 300 there? 271 successful utterances uh, at two o'clock on Thursday, January 9th. Um, that's pretty cool. Let's see if we have um, customers. Yeah, we got a huge spike there. And then there's been a few other people that have popped up um, just to like try this thing since, but none in any, in fact, this is probably me yesterday, just checking it. Uh, but you can see that this only existed for these two days. So it makes sense that we would have all of our users right there. Uh, and how many, how did our sessions look? Those had to be pretty high. Total sessions. So we had, yeah, we had 97 concurrent sessions uh, at one point at that two o'clock on Thursday. That's pretty awesome. Average sessions per customer. Um, this is this is interesting because in order to finish it, you had to have at least 20 sessions because you would. There's no way you could know two clues in a row. You would really have to like end your session, go find another one, find the clue, start another session, and so the minimum you could do this entire scavenger hunt in is 20. And it looks like we had a lot of people that really did well on Thursday. It was less it was less active on Friday. Most people found this on Thursday and got started and finished it. It took about 30 minutes to finish the whole thing. So uh, this is pretty cool. It's kind of fun to see skill activation. Yeah, you can see when my skill was actually activated. This was me testing um, after it had been published. And then all of this stuff here. So um, very, very interesting. Um, I haven't had a lot of a chance to play with these kinds of data. I would guess retention's not high because once they use the skill, um, they, there's no reason to come back, right? That once they've finished the scavenger hunt. So what's the interaction path? Where do people, which, let's see if we can see when people left. Uh, I guess we don't, we won't really know that because there's just the one intent. Nope, all we know is that they launched it and then they exited, which is, reasonable because that's kind of how we constructed it all right pretty cool um so i haven't had i haven't spent a ton of time on the analytics but that's that's pretty awesome total utterances per intent awesome okay um all right so that's that's the scavenger hunt this is leading me to an idea um that i'll have to talk about in the future but uh an idea where i'm actually building something like this but it would be more digital uh and anybody could play wherever they are um but it still requires them to solve puzzles and think through things and whatever so uh, there's an idea brewing and uh, i will be talking more about that here in the future uh all right so we've talked about the code mash scavenger hunt uh and how we talked to Airtable to do that and the data behind it what was the other thing that I wanted to talk about today? I had one other topic that I was like, oh man, that would be a good thing to get into. And now I'm completely blanking on it. Come on, desk, help me out. What was the thing? Uh, do you guys have any questions for me while I'm at it? Because uh, I have I have to think here. There was another thing that I was building. And I can't remember what it was. I was only planning on being on for an hour today, so we're not. This isn't going to be a super long stream. Um, eventually, I'll get back to the Star Wars stuff as well because I really want to take that further and actually publish it. Um, but a lot of the time left is data entry, uh, and so I need to get some more data into the system. Uh, I'm not going to. I'm not going to wait until I have all the data to publish it because um, I should be able to. Uh, I should be able to just um, publish it with a large amount of data and then continue to add to it as I go. It's the same thing I did with my trivia game, which I have tried to publish, um, but I had uh, I had a couple of issues and I haven't been back to revisit those, so I have to go back and figure out why I failed certification on that. Also, um, well, I'm not getting any questions from you guys. Let's see what's happening on Twitter. I have a couple of updates here. I'll see if uh, anybody said anything. All right, someone retweeted me. That's thank thank you for that. Justin Stanley. Uh, all right. Well. Okay. So. 
I can't remember what the other thing is that I wanted to talk about. Let me see if I look in my skills, if I've started anything that would be interesting or useful. I don't think so. No. Nope. Star Wars Data Bank and TKO Trivia are still high on my radar of things to finish. But time has just been at a premium lately. On top of all of this, um, I'm also in the process right now of uh, completely remodeling our kitchen and our bathroom. That was one of the other reasons that I kind of put a pause on the streaming uh, is because there's been like construction happening in my house and hammers and drills and saws and all sorts of stuff. And it's really loud. Um, and I thought it would be super disruptive to try to do anything interesting uh, with all that noise. Thankfully, today's a pretty quiet day, but they're, they're still here. Uh, we've completely gutted our uh, master bathroom. Master bathroom, that sounds so official. But like the bathroom off of uh, the main our main bedroom in our house. And um, yeah, it's it's going to be awesome. I'll definitely post some pictures on Twitter and stuff as the as the progress continues. Um, but man, it's a it's a lot of work and no shortage of expense. Um, but the the kitchen's almost done. It's been painted once. It needs another coat of paint. Uh, but we did all new countertops in there and uh, like a whole new backsplash. So it's it's keeping me busy, guys. Um, there's lots and lots going on. And honestly, this uh, this trip to India, I'm really excited about because uh, it gets me an opportunity to like you know get get on the ground and talk with people and and build stuff with people, which is absolutely my favorite. So. I think we might just keep this to a short stream today. Um, this was good to like remind people that, hey, I'm still here and uh, I still want to do this streaming stuff, but um, I'm not equipped today. I had to rebuild this studio, by the way. There was stuff all like all stacked up here. I had all sorts of things piled up. I still have stuff, more stuff than I should here behind me. Um, like I've got a step ladder sitting right here next to me. Uh, I do a really good job of like framing up the camera and making sure that it doesn't look like chaos, but Pretty much everywhere else in this room is a disaster. Another thing I still want to do is to set up a camera like, I say far away, but it's like eight feet. Uh, but to set up a camera way over in that corner um, that allows me to like flip on and you guys can see like the whole uh, the chaos of the office uh, and what my streaming setup looks like and all that. That's another thing that I'm going to be talking about early this year is like what my streaming setup is and what I use and um, what I find useful and what I've because I've added things and pulled things away. I have a brand new microphone today. Actually, Oxygen Box, Michael Bender. I'd be curious to know how the microphone is today because uh, I swapped out. I have my really good microphone now on the streaming setup, and I'd be really interested to know how the sound is, what it sounds like. Do you, Is this working for you guys? Um, feedback is obviously awesome. So uh, anything you can share there would be super helpful also. Uh, but yeah, I also have aspirations to, uh, change out this camera. So right now this is the camera I'm using. It's just a Logitech, um, HD camera. It's one of their higher end ones, but it's still just like a webcam. Uh, and I've seen and been watched a bunch of tutorials on YouTube that people use for like having an actual DSLR, um, that sits up there, which is, you know, we're talking about probably just the camera itself is seven or $800. And then you got to get a good lens and all sorts of other stuff. But I, I have aspirations to do that because I think it would look way better. It gives you like a depth that this doesn't give you. Um, but those are those are all things to come. So I will talk about changes to the the studio as we go. Um, I'm going to have to figure something out for this light because I can't just have a giant piece of cardboard sitting here next to me. Although it does have the, the Amazon logo on it because uh, I have no shortage of Amazon boxes in my house. But um, yeah, I, I, think, I think I'm good for today. Uh, I really just wanted to get back into this. I wanted to be on stream and show you guys something cool that I built. <clears throat> and I have big, big plans to build some other awesome things in the near future. But, um, yeah, I think I'll put a bow on this for today. And then when I come back on Wednesday, hopefully Wednesday, um, we will have more work on, like, the Star Wars data bank and, and some other things. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, normally I do two full hours here, uh, but we're just going to do about 45 minutes today. And... Uh, the vo volume is a little low. Yeah, I was worried about that. Um, that's See, this is the feedback that I'm looking for. Um, one of the things that I use here for streaming is I have a, oh, I have a PC um, that... What did I just do? All sorts of stuff. Um, I have a PC here that is the streaming setup, and then I have my Mac, which is um, the machine that I do all of my work on. And so for the PC, I have a big monitor here in front of me, and I have this little nice little keyboard with like a trackpad on it. And so this is how I control the PC 
um, even though I have my Mac and everything. So that's how I control this is the Mac. And then um, this keyboard is for the PC itself. And so I was going to check on the volume because I am, I am using a new mic and I have the volume turned up all the way. Uh, and so I'm going to have to figure out how to crank that up. Let's see if I do that. If that's any better, I don't know if that's going to be louder or not. It doesn't seem to be giving me any indication that I'm any louder. And I think if I come closer to the mic, which is right here, um, that might help a little bit. Maybe I can extend this arm. But you know, so I, if I tip it out, it's it's just out of frame. That's where it's supposed to be. Um, but I may have to turn this a little bit to point more at me. We'll see. Anyway, that's all stuff I can play with once I'm off camera. But I want to thank you guys uh, for tuning in. I know, um, I know sometimes uh, you're at work or this is a busy day or whatever. And so I, I really appreciate anybody that's willing to stop in and, and pay attention to what I'm talking about. Um, I, I really, really mean that. It's, it's awesome to be able to see people tune in over and over to see what I'm working on or just um, what I'm playing with. So, again, thank you guys all for tuning in. I'm going to call it a, a day for today. Uh, but we will see you again very soon on here, uh, ideally Wednesday morning. So with that, take care, and I will see you all soon.